It's my pleasure to introduce our first speaker, and that's uh, Bob Hamilton from uh, Sick Kids. He's a professor of pediatrics, an electrophysiologist, uh, well known, I think, to many people uh, who are joining, uh, who's going to be telling us about uh, his fascinating work uh, with antibodies. Bob, take it away. Thanks, Mansour. Here we go. Okay, so good afternoon. And uh, thanks for inviting me to present at our Ted Rogers Center for Heart Research meetings. Uh, today, I'd like to present our recent discovery of an autoantibody profile that detects Brigada syndrome and also the abnormal expression of their myocardial protein targets. This work was performed by Diptendu Chatterjee, who's a scientist and technician in my lab, and also by my master's student and clinical lab manager, Mina Fata, who uh, coordinates the clinical aspects of the study. Dr. Spears from U University Health Network provided clinical details around the adult patient subjects. Um, Dr. Peroni and his group in Arezzo, Italy, provided patient myocardial biopsy samples, and Chris Cunningham from our Ontario coroner's office provided decedent and control samples. Um, Dr. Saguner and uh, Zurich collaborators provided validation samples, similar as, as they did for a previous study that we worked with them. And Dr. Ackerman's Mayo Clinic group and Dr. Schulze Barr's uh, group in Germany also provided samples. Dr. Saguner is a co-senior author on this work. So to outline the presentation, I'll be defining Brigada syndrome. Uh, presenting the evidence that inflammation and or autoimmunity uh, uh, participates in Brigada syndrome or can detect Brigada syndrome, um, as well as discuss the overlap of Brigada syndrome with arrhythm arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy, where we recently identified an auto, an, an auto antibody biomarker. I'll describe how we developed an unbiased platform to, to detect uh, cardiac autoantibodies and how we applied this in Brigada syndrome to find the specific autoantibodies involved. I'll then present our studies on the target proteins of these autoantibodies and finally outline our proposed future studies and invite your questions and thoughts around potential collaborations and other directions for this work. Um, Brigada syndrome is a worldwide problem with an incidence of about one in 2,000 but substantially more prevalent in Southeast Asia, where it's the second most common cause of death under 40, behind only accidental death. Um, Brigada syndrome is difficult to diagnose as the defining ECG feature is often transient and the disease is more than 75% gene elusive. It usually affects adults in their third to fifth decade of life with a male to female ratio of approximately nine to one. And the risk of major uh, arrhythmic events in Brigada syndrome is higher than that in the general population, but the magnitude and specific predictors of risk remain substantially unclear. There's no clear primary mechanism identified for all subjects, and therapy remains challenging. Family members, including offspring of identified uh, Brigada syndrome subjects, are increasingly requesting assessment uh, to me for the presence of this disease, particularly in the children where it's difficult to diagnose. So the most recent 2017 consensus document defines Brigada syndrome based on the spontaneous occurrence of a type one Brigada pattern on ECG as shown in the left-hand uh, tracings, which is defined as more than two millimeters of J point elevation leading into a coved pattern in a right precordial lead uh, whether in standard or modified position. For subjects where a sodium channel blocking drug is needed to elicit a type one response, one additional clinical feature is required, such as documented ventricular fibrillation or polymorphic VT, uh, nocturnal agonal respiration, arrhythmogenic, uh, or, or arrhythmic syncope, a family history of young sudden cardiac death, or a family history of spontaneous type one ECG. Several authors have identified inflammation in Brigada syndrome over the last decade or so. In the top panel for Stasi in 2005, working in Silvia Fiori's lab in, in Italy, demonstrated lymphocytic myocardi uh, myocarditis in an endomyocardial biopsy from a Brigada syndrome patient. Uh, 
Um, Lee and colleagues demonstrated acute inflammation on PET scans in association with frequent arrhythmias in Brigada syndrome. And uh, Maurizio Peroni, a collaborator on, our, on this work today, uh, recently demonstrated myocardial inflammation, focal necrosis, and lymphocytes in CARTO-guided right ventricular outflow tract biopsies in 80% of patients with Brigada syndrome. Over the last two decades, multiple authors have also commented on the phenotypic and genetic overlap of arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy with Brigada syndrome. And just one example is this patient from the publication of Sekiguchi and colleagues, where a subject with the electrocardiographic pattern of Brigada syndrome on the left also demonstrated the right ventricular enlargement and aneurysms typically seen in arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy. So our objectives were to determine if anti-cardiac antibodies are present in Brigada syndrome, assess if autoantibodies provide a useful biomarker in Brigada syndrome in terms of diagnosis, and determine if autoantibodies are involved in the pathogenesis of Brigada syndrome. For this presentation, I'm just going to focus on the first of these two objectives. There is no gold standard for the diagnosis of Brigada syndrome, and consensus diagnosis has evolved over the last two decades. But for this study, we chose to use the most recent, or the 2015 consensus criteria, or Shanghai criteria, as defined earlier. Um, with consent, we obtained samples from, from both uh, cases in discovery and validation cohorts, and also obtained commercial control sera. And I'll describe our development of our discovery platform to detect cardiac autoantibodies. So in 2018, we reported an autoantibody biomarker for arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy, but this was a hypothesis-based approach. Um, we hypothesized that autoantibodies might be present in Brigada syndrome uh, along with its inflammation, but anticipated that these autoantibodies are probably quite unique from arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy, and we really didn't have any good idea what they might be. So we therefore developed an unbiased platform to search for them. We solubilized um, human ventricular myocardium and uh, then used an isoelectric focusing strip to separate these proteins along the strip and transferred them to a 2D gel and then further separated them in the second dimension by molecular weight. And then finally, rather than developing them for proteins, we exposed the plate to human Brigada serum. And um, uh, using, uh, and developed them using an anti-human IgG. Autoantibodies in human disease serum were bound to their respective cardiac protein targets, which we could then uh, pull off the, the gel and identify by mass spec. So to determine Brigada syndrome antibodies, we needed cohorts of patients. And uh, so we used a discovery cohort of sera from four patients, all of whom met consensus conference Shanghai criteria scores of 3.5 or higher in the discovery cohort on top, uh, defining probable or definite Brigada syndrome. One subject had a sodium channel mutation and the, rem the remainder were genelusive. For a validation cohort, we used sera from 12 Zurich patients who also met Shanghai scores of 3.5 or higher on the bottom half of the slide, and in which six out of 12 were sodium channel positive and the other six were gene elusive. So this slide actually demonstrates the actual discovery platform where silver staining on the left identifies the many hundreds of proteins nicely spread and separated across the 2D gel by isoelectric pH and molecular weight. In the middle, we've exposed the gel to Brigada serum and then developed it for antibodies and resulting in the binding of autoantibodies to four acidic low molecular weight proteins, as you can see on the bottom right. Uh, and on the right is the overlap of the two gels. By sampling each spot and assessing by mass spectrometry, we were able to identify that autoantibodies were to four cardiac proteins, connexin 43, keratin, and two actins, alpha cardiac and alpha skeletal muscle actins. As the two actins are highly homologous, these likely represent a single uh, autoantibody. 
And here we demonstrate just the acidic low molecular weight regions of the gels on the bottom right of each gel as the, all the other regions of the gels were clear. And for serum from our discovery cohort on the top left and our validation cohorts on the top right, all demonstrate the, the pattern, uh, the same pattern of reactivity to all four proteins. 36 control samples are shown on the bottom and demonstrate no reactivity. Thus we, thus we have a highly accurate biomarker for Brugada syndrome. I should mention that we've also looked at uh, some hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, some dilated cardiomyopathy, and some ar arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy, sera, and none of them show this pattern either for disease controls. Um, these findings were con confirmed by serum uh, antibody binding to Western blots of the three proteins, actin, keratin, and connexin-43. We just used one actin here, as we really think the antibodies um, identified are really just one antibody to both actins. And the discovery cohort on the top right and validation cohorts on the bottom demonstrate uh, the three um, autoantibodies, uh, three autoantibodies, whereas control serum on the top left demonstrates no antibodies. And then we also confirm these by serum antibody uh, enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, or ELISA, with the discovery and validation cohorts having equivalent high levels of antibody, uh, which were significantly elevated com compared to controls, whereas antibody was uh, minimal or absent in controls. ROC analysis, and it doesn't get much better than this, demonstrates that to date, uh, any of these antibodies provide excellent discrimination of Borgata syndrome. Now, in the, to the myocardial results, using normal myocardium, we assessed for staining by Borgata patient serum versus commercial antibodies. Um, likely because of the presence of anti-actin antibody, because of the presence of anti-actin antibodies in Borgata serum, Brigadum serum stains myocardium strongly across the cell. And, uh, <clears throat> if you look on the middle and bottom, more specific co-localizations can be seen for keratin and connexin-43, as shown by the yellow signal in the merged red and green channels on the right-hand merged figure. Note that each of these proteins demonstrates, demonstrates a fine reticular staining pattern with no aggregation. But then we looked at uh, Brugada myocardium from several sources. We obtained control myocardium from a drug overdose victim, which is the first line, as well as postmortem tissue from a sudden death victim whose brother was identified to have clinical Brugada syndrome and with both uh, 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 brothers harboring uh, sodium channel mutations. Two samples from this decedent were analyzed and they're labeled uh, ON1 and ON2 in the third and fourth lines. We also obtained endomyocardial biopsy specimen slides from nine subjects undergoing evaluation for Brugada syndrome, including one that only met a Shanghai score of two, which did not support a Brugada diagnosis, and that's on line two, and then eight others who met uh, Shanghai scores of 3.5 to 8, indicating probable or definite uh, Brugada syndrome as shown by the bottom four lines of uh, data. And in each of these sets of 10 micrographs, the top left panel is control myocardial tissue. And then in the, and so in the top two lines, we've stained for actin, with myocardial tissue showing a diffuse reticular pattern in the control whereas the decedent myocardium and patient myocardia from biopsies demonstrate aggregation of actin staining into these sort of ropey clusters. This is also evident for connexin-43, which demonstrates lar larger aggregates of staining amongst the decedent and patient biopsy samples, as shown in the middle two lines of micrographs. Uh, but it was most evident for keratin, which demonstrates aggregation of proteins in essentially all myocardial uh, uh, tissue, uh, moving from the, as you look at the bottom two lines, the, the top left of those bottom two is the control tissue and the rest all show these large aggregates of, of uh, keratin. Um, given that sodium channel is implicated in Brugada syndrome as well, we assess sodium channel staining and keep in mind that some of these patients have sodium channel mutations and many do not. 
And the top left microgram, it, it, micrograph is control tissue with the neighboring micrograph being from the biopsy from the patient who had a low Shanghai score and thus we're using that as control as well. Um, and then in comparison tissue in the two samples from the Brigada syndrome patient uh, decedent as well as biopsy tissue from the eight subjects fulfilling Brigada syndrome all demonstrate marked aggregation of sodium channel staining. Um, this aggregation of the involved proteins in myocardium of Brigada syndrome uh, may provide a potential post-mortem test for the diagnosis of this disease in sudden cardiac death cohorts. This slide demonstrates the marked difference in uh, protein particle size as, assen as assessed by quantitative histomorphometry using ImageJ software. Um, so you can see the particle sizes, whether you measure for keratin particle sizes or sodium channel particle sizes are much uh, larger in the Brigada patients than in the few control samples that we had. Um, this is sort of the overarching diagram of what we think is going on. This demonstrates regions of the intercalated disc uh, thought to participate in adhesion and conduction and the potential involvement of the identified proteins. On the right, uh, connects and gap junction plaques delivered to the membrane by microtubular trafficking networks are responsible for cell-to-cell -cell transmission of the action potential. Actin filaments insert into these regions via the ZO1 molecule. In the adjacent uh, perinexus uh, region, um, um, connexons and adjacent sodium channels are held in place through actin and attachments to a subcortical actin network. And actin also provides rest stops to the microtubular network. Within the desmosome itself, um, desmond filaments are normally anchored at the intercalated disc, but under conditions of cell stress, such as heart failure, keratin filaments replace desmond filaments. Um, thus, we've identified uh, autoantibodies that characterize and act as a biomarker in Brigada syndrome. Um, their protein targets are each misexpressed in patient myocardium. This misexpression may result in protein disposal mechanisms that expose cryptic epitopes to the immune system, generating autoantibodies. Um, through assessment of further samples from, collaborator, we, from collaborators, we hope to identify whether all components are required to provide a clinical biomarker for disease and which portions of the protein or epitopes generate these autoantibodies. We'll investigate whether this biomarker is predictive of disease development and whether it's prognostic for the major arrhythmic events that many of these patients experience. Up to this point, the test used to detect Brigada syndrome in the absence of a definitive type 1 ECG pattern has been a drug provocation test. In a recent editorial addressing the poor sensitivity and specificity of drug provocation for Brigada syndrome diagnosis, Dr. Albert Sun of Duke University commented that the perfect diagnostic test is harmless, cost-effective, and completely differentiates patients with and without disease. But regrettably, such a test doesn't exist in the real-world setting. We believe that we've now identified such a test for Brigada syndrome. While we've developed a robust platform for detection of autoantibodies, we are not in the Hamilton lab tremendously experienced in the overall characterization of immunity um, and particularly not in cellular immunity. So we'd like to explore the mechanisms by which the observed protein misexpressions are involved in the pathophysiology of Brigada syndrome. And we're particularly focusing on ion channel trafficking. We'd like to expand on our findings to evaluate new signals for, uh, of Brigada syndrome that are generalizable across all causes, can be modeled in cells or small organisms, and would lend themselves to high throughput, throughput compound screening. Thanks for your attention, and uh, be pleased to entertain any questions or comments. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, uh, Bob. Just a beautiful, lucid presentation through bench to bedside and discovery. And congratulations are, of course, uh, in order. Um, so we've got good time for question. And, and, and Bob, I, I typed in a couple already that you may have looked at. One is you commented very nicely about how some of the work depended on international collaborations.
uh, rare condition, sharing samples, having a validation cohort is so important. What have you learned? How challenging was that to get access to samples, moving samples across institutions, let alone you know countries and internationally? What 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 can you tell us about that process? Um, it, it it tells me never to let Nina leave my lab. <laughs> She's very good at it. Um, you need somebody that is willing to do the the clinical lab management and but you know once you've done two or three you know the other dozen or two dozen um it's very very easy i mean my part is to convince my collaborators how easy it is for us to do this so and and we have a very straightforward routine and and it may not be exactly the same routine that everybody else uses but we try to get colleagues to follow it, which is, you know, we do a confidentiality disclosure agreement first, um, and then we share our, our ethics, that our ethics have been approved and share the protocol and try to convince them to do a secondary site ethics at their site. And then we do an MTA and a DTA. And um, it can really be uh, nicely organized and smoothed out and and so, you know, having done a few of them, I started really reassuring um, my collaborators that we could help them do this with minimal effort on their part. Um, and, and then there's the cost. Um, um, the, you know, if I had it to do all over again, I think I would invest in a in a courier company because <laughs> uh, <laughs> they make they make a lot of money. And, and Bob, for for clarity, are you getting them to send? plasma, blotted proteins, what's the sample that's actually coming to your lab? So, so for the vast majority of our work, it's serum. serum. Um, we do have some centers that have already collected plasma in a biobank. And um, we have a colleague at, in Laval who happened to collect uh, both ARVC and Brigada samples in both formats, in, in serum and in plasma. Um, those samples just arrived um, just before we shut down. And uh, so we will be able to demonstrate equivalence or non-equivalence of those two sample types shortly. And Bob, my second question uh, was, what's your sense at this stage? Do you feel these antibodies are pathogenic um, markers? Uh, in other words, the immune system is an innocent bystander. I, I gather the collaboration that you proposed makes a lot of sense. What's your gut feeling at this stage? Are these pathogenic antibodies? For right ventricular cardiomyopathy, yes. For Brugada syndrome, so far, no. Um, we've, only, we've done about four different kinds of experiments for ARVC that all suggest that the antibodies are significantly pathogenic and could, could perhaps be targeted by therapies ranging from, you know, anti-immune therapies all the way through to um, CAR T-cell therapies. Uh, for Brugada syndrome, we've done um, a limited assay in, in uh, normal um, um, uh, IPSC cardios, uh, commercial ones, and, and the antibodies in Brugada syndrome don't seem to have any effect. Uh, whereas in ARVC, they do. Other questions, folks? Shout away or unmute and ask. We can try and deliberate. There's lots of people on, which is fantastic. Just while people are thinking of questions or typing out questions, one of the things that, um, you know, is that this platform that we developed is probably transferable to anywhere where you think there might be humoral autoimmunity. So where you're looking for antibodies and it's a nice way. I mean, the, prior to this platform, people would just use tissue sections and then try to deduce from the staining pattern on the tissue section, what the autoantibodies were against. Um, now we can look at all the proteins at once. Um, the mass spec analysis is a little complex. You don't always um, get the expected results, but uh, with a little bit of thought and uh, investigation um, of all the different um, 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 
transcripts um, that are expressed that you can usually figure it out. 